New research suggesting most transmissions of coronavirus is person to person. How comfortable are you going to the dentist? The decision by more than 40 states allowing dentists to reopen full time has definitely touched a nerve. Pardon the pun. Everyone in a dentist's office, from the doctor to the hygienist to patients, are now facing a situation where routine procedures pose risks that are anything but routine. So I went to Connecticut, one of the states reopening, to get to the bottom line on this controversy. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Connecticut orthodontist Dr. Gary Open is back in business, fully reopening his office today. We do have quite a backlog. We have been closed for six weeks. The new normal means keeping patients safe in the age of COVID. We are wearing higher level masks, N95s. We are wearing face shields also, and we're wearing disposable gowns. He's overhauled his office, investing in a new air filtration system, significantly reducing the number of patients he'll see each day and revamping waiting room procedures. Their temperature will be checked. Once everything is deemed okay, we will escort the patient to the chair where we'll be working. Dental practices are by nature invasive, and preliminary research suggests the coronavirus survives airborne for hours. That's why some industry insiders like hygienist Megan Zadrowski worry dental offices are reopening before it's safe. Aerosols generated in the dental office are unavoidable, whether it's by dentist drills, whether it's by hygienist instruments, or even the patients themselves who may need to cough. The American Dental Association has issued national guidelines, including hygienists using hand tools instead of automated devices and limiting drills, suggestions that Zadrowski worries not all dentists will follow. Would you go to a dentist right now for a non-emergent problem? I would absolutely avoid going to the dental office with a non-emergent service. A recent national survey by the American Dental Association found three in ten dentist offices didn't have any supply of N95 masks and nearly 18% had no face shields. Connecticut dentist Dr. David Fantarella says it has been a challenge. We do have what we need. It has not been easy. He's invested beyond the guidelines, including a fogger to clean rooms and a mobile UVC unit to reduce pathogens. You understand why people are nervous? For sure, I'm nervous, but I'm also nervous on the flip side of that. If we don't do anything, what about that patient? That they get really sick. That they get really sick. All dentists facing the new reality that being afraid of the dentist means something different now. I wanted to make sure my child was safe and comfortable in a setting outside the home. What are you looking forward to most when all this is uh, over? Well, getting my teeth straight, definitely. The challenge of reopening a business when it's anything but business as usual. Joining us now is Dr. Amesh Adalja, senior scholar from the Johns Hopkins Center of Health Security. We thank you for sticking around. So let's talk about the science of aerosols because that's the main thing. I've heard it from people who are deciding whether or not to go to the dentist, the hygienists, uh, many of them who have decided not to go back to work right now. It's the number one thing that they talk about. What do we know and how difficult or easy can it be with the right equipment to minimize any risk? There definitely are dental instruments that can generate aerosols, certain things that they use to clean, these rotary drills. And there are ways that dentists can modify the, these types of procedures, according to CDC guidance, to still be able to perform their, their procedures without aerosolizing. And if they are going to be aerosolizing, it's important that they wear the appropriate personal protective equipment and 95 masks, eye shields. And all dentists should be able to think about doing this because this is something that we're going to be facing until there is a vaccine. The dentists are going to have to open their practice. We can't let dental health kind of shrivel away during this pandemic because those patients still get sick. They come to the emergency department instead, and no one can really do anything there because we don't have those tools in emergency departments. And there was this alarming study uh, that showed nearly half of dentists said if they didn't get back up and running by the end of summer, that they thought that they would have to close. And of course, we've seen this with uh, ERs and, and small rural hospitals. Often the places that are going to close are the places in the more remote areas where people are underserved, where they don't have an option to go to a bunch of different places like I would have in New York City. Having said that, what are the questions that people should be asking if they're nervous about going to the dentist, but they feel like they should be going. They should be asking about what the procedure is when they enter the dentist's office. Is there screening? How is the waiting room set up? What personal protective equipment do they have for the, for the dentist and the dental hygienist? 
What are the protocols that they're going to be using? Are there certain procedures that they can or can't do? That, that's what people should be asking, but they shouldn't wait. If they have a dental problem that needs urgent care, they need to be seen. We don't want people putting things off, and we've seen that during this pandemic, that with many health conditions, people have put, put off being seen because they're nervous about the coronavirus, understandably so, but we don't want all of these health problems to stack up so that we end up with a, an insurmountable problem as we start getting back more. Dr. Amesh Adalja, always great to see you. Thank you so much for being with us today. And